Graniteville, South Carolina, one of the largest the largest manufacturers in the entire United States. Owned by Avondale Mills, that was that was made in 1942, but one such accident can change the calm towns of Graniteville into a disastrous place. On January 5, 2005, NS local train P-22 was stopped parked at a siding in near Avondale Mills, and consisted of one locomotive. GP fifty nine forty six twenty two, and two loaded box cars. The crew had finished its daily run, and called in dispatch at seven fifty three and seven fifty four p.m. to clear two track warrants that were blocking the tracks. However, the train wasn't going to depart on the next night on January six two thousand five. The train was in that siding because it was it was. It was it was blocking the tracks and put into a siding to to make other to make two trains pass. One of them was NS Manifest One Ninety Two, with NS SD Sixty Sixty Six Fifty Three, and Sixty Five Ninety Three. They were pulling seventeen empties and twenty five loaded, including ten ten tanker cars loaded with chlorine gas sodium hydroxide, and most importantly, Kresel. All very toxic and kill if hits or skin, in hip, if hits skin or inhale. The NS is just entering Graniteville at two in the morning on January 6th. The switch should have been set on the main line so the NS manifest can pass through. This was suspicious. This was responsible for the for the breakman of P twenty two. However, it was still set for the sighting. And then one ninety two saw saw the sighting switch and pulled emergency braking, but inevitable was pre- was not prevented. Uh, what was your emergency? Hey, uh. I work at uh, Data Processing in Graniteville. Okay. I think there's been a train wreck. Yeah, I'm on West Emergency. Something has happened to the train down here, and there's a strong odor coming from it. This man's running down the sidewalk down there hollering, help, help, help. We've come back in the house because we don't know what the fumes are. Okay, we'll get, we'll get an ambulance and a fire out there, okay? It's blowing off all over the town down here. Can you see what it is? I'm fixing to walk down there. This, this, uh, that strong smell? Not, I can smell something, but man, it's got to look. It's, it's low to the ground and it's a fog. Now, where's your emergency? Something's wrong with the train. One of the cars, I don't know what's happened, but it's letting out some kind of bleach smelling gas. Now, where's your emergency? Yeah, our train just derailed. There's chemicals all in it. I don't know what kind of chemicals it is. <laughs> Hello? Are you there? The two trains crash into each other at around 3.01, releasing a toxic smoke that about strutted about a quarter of a mile radius. And people were gasping for air, more like what soldiers did in World War I 200 years earlier. Uh, over a thousand people were evacuated from their homes. While well, hazmat teams fight the fire and many other chemical, nine people lost their lives, including the engineer of one ninety, of engineer of one ninety two, who died in hospital later on. Two hundred and fifty people were taken to hospital for clothing expo- exposure in their noses, and forty six twenty two had its had its nose damage. An investigation was launched by the NTSB. And told both alive, both alive peep engineers that were that were that were, were the crewmen and the engineer of P twenty two. The crew, he, they said that the crewmen and and one ninety two said that they said that the switch wasn't. They said that the switch wasn't. They were 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 sure that the switch was actually set on the main line rather than the siding. However, in reality, it wasn't which caused nine people their lives. 
and made a big mistake. All three units were taken to Altuda, North Carolina, where 6593 was scrapped. 6653 was repaired in SD60E 6900 and is still in service today. 4622 was re- renumbered as 4656 and then was and then was and then was built into a GP59E numbered as 4652 and is still in service today. And was the first time that it was the first time that Norfolk Southern had an engine that was renumbered in a crash accident. Almost like the Red Oak train collision in 2011. Avondale Mills was lost to the to be due to the cause of the accident. That that railroad was uh, was not oculation at the time, and Avondale Mills was closed, and paid more than one hundred forty million dollars because of the accident. And the child opened on March tenth, two thousand eight, in the city of Columbia, South Carolina. And then on March 10th, 2010, Norfolk Southern paid more than four, $40, $40 million for the lawsuit of the accident. Thanks to the chlorine release in the diesel fuel that spilled out. It's been 15 years since this accident, and we hope that a, a small town like this will never have a scary crash anymore. Mm-hmm.